There's no better feeling than making someone smile, fixing something that's broken, or truly being yourself through your own creativity. It's these things that make the car community, our community, so varied and so exciting, despite the occasional haters who always shout loudest. And while people will continue to attack and defend the MX-5 Miata in equal measure, I for one have a deep fondness for them. So a lot of you guys who have been following the Project MX-5 series and who have also been following me on Instagram will have noticed that there is a distinct lack of Phil. And that's because I haven't actually told anyone this, but I kind of killed Phil again. Uh, just started Phil up. He started a little bit rough and then I gave him a few revs and then a weird noise happened and then Phil cut out. So I'm going to try and start him one more time and see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? That's just a starter motor. Phil, ladies and gentlemen, is officially dead. But there are plans afoot to bring Phil back to life, which is where this car comes in. And the man who made this car is this chap, a chap called Bruce. And what do we have under the bonnet here, Bruce? This is a three litre uh, V6 from uh, a Jaguar S-Type. I haven't sat and driven a Mark 1 MX-5 for about four months. Um, Phil has been unloved for that amount of time. So yeah, V6ing Phil. Let me know your thoughts in the uh, comments below. Let's uh, start her up first. Oh, oh my god, that sounds good. <laughs> You'll have to excuse this interruption, but I'd like to pause here for a second to warn you that the following montage perfectly represents my initial driving impressions. Oh, oh. Ah. Yeah. Me. I apologize guys if you're watching this in your bedrooms and uh, your parents can't see what you're watching and if they hear me then they're gonna think that some bad stuff is going down when Phil was working he was punching out about 250 brake horsepower this also has got about 240 brake horsepower but the way that it goes about that horsepower is completely different. Obviously V6, really nice linear power progression. And the noise, I mean, even if this had like 20 horsepower, with a noise like this, oh, I wouldn't care. So Bruce has made something extremely special and interestingly for the Mark II MX-5 Mazda actually looked into putting this engine into the car but they decided that it would be way too expensive and people would not want to pay the premium. These days however you've got people like Bruce who think screw that I want an MX-5 with a V6 and here we are. Why a V6? Um, I looked at forced induction, supercharged, turbocharged, like yourself, um, and I just couldn't bring myself to do something ordinary. And, that, and also something that, that wasn't reliable, because Phil has been anything but reliable. Right, he's not starting? No, Phil's, Phil's just leaking loads of oil. Really? <laughs> Phil's squeaking now. Clutch is buggered. I'd done some reading, and yeah, on the face of it, forced induction sounds like a very simple, straightforward way to go. But you change one thing, you yeah. need to tweak another, you need to tweak another, and so on and so forth. And then stuff breaks. Stuff breaks. Yeah. This is 240 horsepower out of the box. It's, that's this, awesome. That's just the standard engine in a Jaguar S type.
I need a V6. Phil, you're gonna get a V6. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care the bad things that I need to do to make it happen. It just has to happen. Oh. Force induction on the four part is a really easy way to get amazing power. But if you want a sound that will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up, then you need a V6. And for you guys watching, I hope that you'll be happy with the V6 for Phil. I know a lot of you guys wanted rotary, loads of people saying V8, but I think a rotary would be way too high maintenance. I'm not really a V8 fan. I know they sound great and everything, but for me, I would much rather have six cylinders. I don't know why. Maybe it's a European thing. So yeah, we've got the uh, six-speed manual gearbox from a Mark II, and everything else is Mark I in here. He's done nice kind of leather stuff on the dashboard, and this is all nice leather and long leather and beautiful, and it's super comfortable. So the six-speed gearbox, really light, precise, beautiful. It's actually lighter than I remember. Maybe the five-speed and the six-speed are slightly different in that respect. All the pedal weights, super light as well, but not like modern car, like, like an Econobox or something. It does have a nice weight to it. Everything that you see under this bonnet, except slightly better, because this is the prototype version, will cost around £6,000, which is a lot of money to spend on a Mark I MX-5 considering that you can get yourself a turbo kit for your existing engine for about three and a half thousand pounds all in. But you're paying two and a half thousand pounds more for a completely different experience. After extensive research, Bruce and business partner Tom settled on the all aluminium Ford Duratec V6 that was originally a Porsche design which Ford later took over with input from Cosworth. In its current form, it produces 240 bhp at 6,750 rpm and 221 pound foot at 4,100 rpm. So what's in the Rocketeer MX V6 kit and what does around £6,000 get you? Included are the front subframe, engine mounts, full exhaust system, light and flywheel, an upgraded clutch, air filters, an electric water pump, the engine loom and various belts, a bespoke ECU based on the ME221 and last but not least, the instruction manual. It was originally built as, as a one-off for myself, but the idea now is that, well, I can produce a kit of this and, you know, why should I deny the rest of the world access, access to this? But well, one issue that I've had with Phil is that it's been really not reliable and recently the engine broke and I haven't been able to drive the car that I love most and that's really, really frustrating. But with the V6, reliability issues I in doubt because you're not forcing a whole amount of air into a little engine. So Bruce and his business partner Tom were telling me earlier that with a V6, the MX-5 is the complete package. And I completely agree. There are no downsides to this. You've got the noise of a race car. You've got the nimble handling of a Mark I MX-5. You've got the open top experience. You've got everything that makes the MX-5 so special. And then you've got this. I've been shouting too much, I apologise guys, I'm shouting way too much. But, oh, it feels so good to be back in an MX-5. And one as special and as beautiful as this. And if I can make Phil even a fraction as good as this and make him sound anything like this, I am going to be so happy. My name's Andrew Lee. I've been diagnosed with uh, stage four kidney cancer, and this is my Liberty Walk GTR. Ooh.